Chapter 20, A Great Man Born Between Heaven and Earth The next day, in the faint light of dawn, the snow had stopped. The morning dew was heavy, the air humid. Han Yi was already up and washing his face. He dabbed some clear water and styled his own hair in front of a bronze mirror. Benefactor, what are you up to so early, won't you sleep a little longer? Tushin Kingli was lying on the bed, supporting her cheek with one hand, she asked with curiosity. I came to the county of Skyfire with a mission. After Han Yi had smoothed out his cowlick, he cautioned solemnly. Remember, in front of others, you must never reveal your identity as a member of the demon race. Otherwise, you'll be in danger. Benefactor, I understand this point. Tushin Kingly obediently nodded. And another thing, don't call me Benefactor. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Han Yi sighed helplessly. This name was too awkward, primarily because others would know what had happened just by hearing this address. All right, then he'll call you young master, young master Han. Tushin Kingly playfully stuck out her tongue. Han Yi took a deep breath. After thinking over it all last night, he barely managed to accept the fact that a white fox had suddenly become his companion. They both talked a lot last night. Tushin Kingly said that although she was a member of the Tushin family, the place where she used to live had long been taken over by other members of the demon race. She had to flee to the mortal realm with her mother. It took her a full 300 years of cultivation to shapeshift into human form. In the demon race, this age was still very young, equivalent to a child's age. Han Yi admitted that he had read many classic stories about fox women and youngsters. Shell maidens, golden carp repaying kindness, and had fantasized about coming across them someday. But who would have expected that this would actually happen to him? Look at the bright side, Tushin Kingly is a descendant of Fox Immortal, not an ordinary demon, she's not that scary. With this thought, he felt somewhat more at ease. I am going to visit the Liang County Magistrate. Will you stay here and wait for me to come back and pick you up, or what? There's no need to trouble yourself so much, I can follow young master silently. Tushin Kingly smiled softly. Her delicate body then became ethereal, turning into a wisp of green smoke, disappearing into Han Ye's sleeve. Seeing this, Han Ye's eyes revealed astonishment and he admiringly said, This skill is amazing, you come and go without a trace, could you teach me this? The voice of Tushin Kingly sounded in his ear, sure, it's easy. Just cultivate for a hundred years, uh. Han Yi was at a loss for words. Early in the morning, the escort carriage drove up to the entrance of the County of Skyfire House and stopped. This trip was led by Han Yi, he also wanted to assess the abilities of these newly trained guards. Brother Han, how big an official is this prefect? Along the way, Wang Da Niu suddenly turned his head to ask Han Yi this question. Han Yi clearly didn't expect Da Niu to be interested in this, after thinking for a while, he explained, in Great Zhou. This is a very high-ranking official, a fourth rank, and considered the honor of a prefecture. He is the prefect, you can consider him the boss of eight counties, managing one-tenth of Yun province. Equivalent to eight county magistrates, that's so big. Wang Da Niu also marveled in admiration. Han Yi laughed lightly and said, above the prefect, there are provincial governors holding sway over a province. And above them, there are viceroys, as powerful as a local emperor. In my life, I've never left the county. Such vast provinces and regions, are there cultivators there too? Um, I'm not sure. Han Yi hadn't really considered this question. What exactly was the relationship between the Great Zhou Dynasty and the cultivator sects? Was it a cooperative alliance, or did the sects and the court remain neutral, neither interfering with each other? Of course. This wasn't something he needed to think about now. For now, he just needed to do his job well. From afar, Han Yi saw a robust middle-aged man in a scarlet official robe. He approached with a smile to greet him. My respects to the Liang County Magistrate. Ah, if it isn't Warrior Han. I didn't expect that Master Liu would have you escort me. Upon hearing his voice, Liang County Magistrate turned his head, revealing a pleasantly surprised expression, and chuckled. Months passed, yet Warrior Han, you seem to become even more robust. He uttered in a teasing tone. In fact, what he said was indeed true. Han Yi had become a martial artist. 
Whether it was his spirit, vigor, or physical shape, all had greatly advanced compared to a few months ago. Hence, the Liang County Magistrate's observation was correct. Han Yi smiled slightly and bowed his hand. Sir, I should now call you Lord Liang. Congratulations on your promotion. Also, I'm here on behalf of Master Liu to congratulate you. After finishing, he handed over a jade token. A huge smile appeared on the face of Liang County Magistrate. As he accepted the jade token, he waved off, I have not yet taken up the office, there's no need for such courtesy. These things from Liu Xinglong will become useful when I travel to the Zhangnan Prefecture. As always, he is very astute, afraid of any mistake. Han Yi complimented, your official fortune is prosperous, and you've received the Emperor's favor. In the future, I'm certain that you will rise rapidly and stand beside the Emperor. This sycophantic remark hit the right chord and Liang County Magistrate couldn't help but smile, going to Zhang Nan is indeed a favor from the Emperor. I have been the Magistrate of the County of Skyfire for eight years, and now I am finally moving up in the ranks. Wait, I have something to give you. As he spoke, Liang County Magistrate seemed to recall something and took out a sealed letter from his package. He presented it in front of Han Yi. What is this? Hanya asked in confusion. Liang County Magistrate explained with a smile, I wrote this letter two months ago. Looking at our great Zhou, where everything runs smoothly, many cultivation sects stand tall, exceptional talents emerge. The world is so vast, what place can't we go to? A nobleman born in the world, how can he dwell beneath others for a long time? Coming from a humble background is not a disgrace. As an official, I fully understand the hardship of people of humble birth, so... You must keep this commandment safe. When Han Yi took the envelope, he finally realized. The object in his hands was the mandate that Liang County Magistrate wrote for the Liu Manor. Its purpose was to free him from his status of servitude. My gratitude to Master Liang. At this moment, Han Yi was deeply moved. He bowed to the direction of Liang County Magistrate, his gaze firm and he formally said, Your favor, sir, I shall never forget. Very well. The Liang County Magistrate stroked his beard and smiled with satisfaction. It wasn't until the emissary from the court arrived to urge that the two parted ways. Han Yi looked at the two emissaries from the court. Noticing their powerful gaze like that of a dark hawk, their profound breath, graceful posture, and how they escorted the carriage carrying Master Liang as it pulled away. Obviously, these were individuals not to be trifled with. Clearly, this great Zhou's court was no typical mortal dynasty. Han Yi mused. Having safely delivered the item, the matters to follow got simpler. Han Yi and his party started their journey back to the manor. On the way, Gao Kiching was driving the horse carriage, with other guards riding horses. He glanced at the thoughtful Han Yi and interjected, Brother Han, with your kind of abilities. How is it possible that you ended up as a tenant at the Liu Manor? Indeed, Han Brothers Martial Arts is the fastest and best I've ever seen. It's hard to believe that he's actually of tenant origin. You should know, the money I earn as a carpenter has mostly all been spent on body training. Same here, the income from my father's ironmongery shop, all of it gets spent on buying esoteric medicines. My father keeps calling me a spendthrift, he doesn't understand that this is just the first step in cultivation. If I could really become a member of a sect, what would the money matter then? You are already at the internal organs realm, right? With such a foundation, in the future, you'll join the Dragon Sparrow sect, who cares about servitude. If I were you, I wouldn't even bother. Guards on the journey like Li Chong, Xiao Jin, etc. All join the conversation. A group of rough men unusually finding common ground. Han Yi remained silent for a while, then sighed and said, It's a matter of time and destiny, I don't wish it either. Gao Kitchen comforted him unusually, Brother Han, don't ever believe in destiny. It's all up to you, fight for what belongs to you. Thank you, Brother Gao. Hearing this, it seemed Han Yi made a decision and he chuckled. You're welcome, just remember us when you become successful in the future. Haha, <laughs> deal. It took them roughly half a day to return to the Liu Manor. After entering the Liu Manor, Han Yi, holding the mandate from Liang County Magistrate, walked along the long veranda of the courtyard, his expression somewhat cautious and hesitant. 
Eventually, he headed towards Master Elias' study room, 